late and buzzard, Fat Boy Tiff. They wanted their robot to look like a robot, not like others here. So Killer Lot's taken offence. Two pneumatic spikes, a wheelchair motor, two windscreen wipers, the lot under 200 quid. I'm John Lewis. This is my son Richard. This is our robot, Fat Boy Tim. He's built as a classic robot. He's got real attitude. He's got arms and spikes to blow the other robot away. Hopefully he'll have enough power to push him around the ring as well. He's running on a 36-volt motor with compressed air spikes. So uh, we're just uh, hoping he can do the business. From Alton in Hampshire and seated number 26, Blunderbird 4. Their main weapon, they say, is fear, surprise, brute force. Oh, and a slicer dicer. 15 mile an hour top speeds from two motors. The shell is aeroplane aluminium. These boys plan to soar. Oh, yes. They walked the walk and talked the talk last summer around with Blunderstorm. But they were idle boasts and Thermidor much too strong. A technical malfunction meant that Blunderstorm went out there back this time with a much better robot. I'll tell you what, they didn't have arrive in style today. They arrived with their secret machine at an unnamed RAF base somewhere in the south of England. Actually, it was RAF Odium. Thanks to the boys for that. All their help. Mike Onslow, Brian Kilburn, great lads. Mike, a sculpture model maker, built a succession of Blunderbirds. Once built a full-size model of the Titanic, out of sticky back plastic and toilet roll, so he does know what he's doing here. And Brian, he describes himself as a professional layabout. His hobbies are curries and beer. He's the weapons operator, harshly sighted, as we've heard. The Blunderbird 4 machine had arrived. Slowly but surely, into the watching eyes of the Robot Wars world. And I'll tell you something, Mike, Brian, Blunderbird 4, they are not here to conduct, in any sense of the word, international rescue. We are the Blunderbird team. And this is our new robot, Blunderbird 4. And we're here to teach you lot a lesson. And that is Brian Kilburn, who is a new product manager, and hobbies include dressing up and looking hard. And that is Mike Onslow, a mould maker and sculptor, who also likes dressing up and looking hard. So don't forget, the, the boys, boys are back! Robotics, stand by. Versing Getterix. The Isle of Wight team, bringing us back to reality. Fat Boy Tin from Leighton Buzzard, John Lewis and Richard Lewis, his son, and there's Blunderbird. Mike and Brian. I wonder what they do at weekends. Three, two, one, activate. Blunderbird by far the fastest of these machines. There's Fat Boy Tin by far the highest, 1.2 metres. That's the tallest robot we've ever had, actually, in Robot Wars. Compares with, well, look, compares with Killalop there in the distance. But it's a trundler, isn't it? A real throwback. The old robots of sci-fi in the 50s and 60s. Blunderbird 4 with the slicer, dicer, versing Getterix with the axe and lifter. Fat Boy Tin with the uh, smile. The spikes as well, to be fair. There's a lot out of the CPZ. And lifting Fat Boy Tin up. Here we go, any moment now. Fat Boy Tin, once it's toppled, is there any way back? Blunderbird 4 moving away. <laughs> First thing, get Timber! Oh! Bounce on to Sir Killalot's face! And eventually, over she goes! Fat Boy Tin! Well, that's it, really, isn't it? First thing, get now, causing trouble to the aluminium shell of Fat Boy Tin. In comes Sergeant Bash. Very, very tall. But the Blunderbird boys knew. The Versing Getterix boys knew, and the house robots knew. Once you topple Fat Boy Tin, really, this mash-up melee was going to be over before it started. Dead metal spinning away. Oh, Blunderbird's been toppled as well by Versing Getterix. Now, it's too late to affect this one. They'll go through, but that's a key clue 
to future battles. Fat Boy Tim were immobilized way before, but that's a key issue. And other robots will have watched the way the Bursting Getterix toppled Blunderbird 4. Now writing the Blunderbird team. Almost inviting him, come on, come back to dance, and maybe the house robots will cause some more problems with you. We know Fat Boy Tim. Oh, this is going to be interesting. On the arena flipper. I wonder how far they can throw this monster robot. Not very far. Weighty, 77.1 kilos, and there with it went Bursting Getterix. Getting in too close. Look at that. Well, they were overconfident, Ian Gear, Alistair Curtis Horsfall and Sun Tom. Bursting Getterix, though, has that Sremek arm. You see the self-riding arm. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Damage to Fat Boy Tin. Oh, right through the smile. He's not smiling now. Smiling on the other side of their faces, the opponents and the house robots. Fat Boy Thin now. <laughs> well, one in the eye for Fat Boy Tin. Plunderbird 4 and Verse and Getterix go through. That is the first snail to have fought in Robot Wars. John here is going to explain what happened. The Fat Boy Tin team are out, unfortunately. Tell us, talk us through it. Well, Fat Boy Tin's so big, he won't go in the, in the shed and there's not room in the garage, so we keep him in the garden under a big sheet. The snail must have got up inside. So, basically, the snail has been in uh, Robot Wars, but he's still in there. When we took the cover off, he was uh, just in the back there. Do you think he caused you the problem? I doubt. Oh, right, no, so talk me through exactly what happened there, engineering-wise. Forget the wildlife. The, just the main battery leak come off, so once we lost all drive, we've had it. So, it's just one of them things. But look at that, you sneaked animal, isn't that brilliant? It's priceless. Oh, yeah. we're taking back. My, <laughs> my, my wife will kill me if I uh, let anything happen to him now, so oh. we'll have to go back in the garden. <laughs> oh, no, the final nail in the fat boy tin coffin they're out thunderbird four versus getterix through along with spawn and scutter and nightmare so this is how they line up the seeds kept apart scutter will play versus getterix thunderbird four will match up with the nightmare more championship battles in a moment but first my fingers are just twitching for a game of pinball <laughs> Spawn of Scutter dominating our test of driving skill, pace, ability. Five robots to come, and they're all of them very, very good. From Dublin, and seeded number 21, Deertor. Great competitors. Kieran Byrne on the right, Peter Redmond in the middle, and young lad on the left. Did he pass a resemblance to a Robot Stand Wars by. presenter? He's Jack Charles. Three, two, one. Activate. So they'll go straight to the barrels. Five points for each of the barrel knocked over. But this is not just a test of driving control, it's speed as well. That's 50 points as they got in behind Bash. Hit the arena target. Just uh, nudging the big sphere out of the way. But Death Metal comes in now. And that will impede progress. There's the multi ball release. You release those balls, 10 points. You've got to release them first, though. Jobs on. Well, they finally release them. I wonder if they've tagged themselves onto the multiple. No, they're okay. They're away, but this isn't a very quick run, lads. Points a bit hard to come by 75 there. Another target now. If they can open the car doors, they'll get another 25 points, and they do so. So it's steady. The bell rings. That's a bowling ball, by the way, from the multiple release. <laughs> On top of Diotor. We're used to seeing the fur on fire by now. That won't bother them. I don't think this run will bother Spawn of Scutter at the top of the leaderboard. Appreciated by the crowd at the arena, but no, it wasn't good enough. They're delighted with it. Steady, but not spectacular. OK, that was the start. Most robots go for the barrels. Easy points and 50 there. Then the multiple release, but finally too slow to get the points on the board there. The big 75, and then the car door. But that was it. 180 points, though, look, which shows you the wonderful achievement of Spawn of Scutter knocking up 245. Four robots still to come in the Pinball Warrior. It looks like everybody wants to get their oily mitts on that pinball trophy. But right now, 
Let's get back to the wars. Great fun to come, no doubt, from Blunderbird 4 against Nightmare. First up, though, versing Getterix against those spawn of scutter ruffians, tykes, great sportsmen. We're having a team meeting just before we go into the arena. Huddle together. What are your tactics? Um, we're going to make them fly, just like we did with the birthday cake. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to get through this, don't you? Because you want to have a go at Plunderbirds. We do, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's old needle there. You know, we've got to, got to sort it out once and for all, haven't we, really? So, so who's the artist, doesn't it? Who's yeah. the artist? Who's yeah. the artist? Yeah. yeah. Can you see yeah. me with those shades on? Yes, just about. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, Spores. Let's see what your T-shirt says. Resistance. It's futile. 